Hello! When last you saw these characters, they had just lost a to coin toss to a Tom and Tool sample set, which I was rather mad at. But uh, they are now out of the penalty box. They are done waiting, and I'm going to now review them. Uh, no notes on these, because um, uh, basically I, just, I, I, don't, I didn't have time. But uh, I'm going to give them a good, honest review. I cannot even remember who sent me these samples, actually. But I was in the mood for some pears, some pear brandy. And here we are. Now, these are unusual among pear brandies in that most pear brandies I've seen, at least, you know, coming from Europe in particular, uh, are not aged in oak. They are presented as eau de vies, whereas these are. There we go. Uh, I... I'm kind of doing this a little bit on the fly when I just have a, a free moment. So these haven't been airing out as long as I would have liked. I've been give, airing them out about about an hour or so. Uh, so I'm going to give all of these a drop of water just to air them out. The last one, uh, the Copper and Kings, I reviewed another version of this a little while ago, a long while ago, um, is bottled at considerably higher strength than the others. So I'm going to go back to this after I'm done, you know, in the first round. But the others I'm just going to do... Uh, a once over. Um, oh, what to say about these? So, what I've got is the uh, Peach Street Pear Brandy XO. This is a six year old. Uh, label's a little bit torn. Bottled at 40% ABV, which is criminal, but uh, we'll, we will uh, make do. Um, so, I tried the Peach Street uh, Peach Brandy a while back. Uh, was also complained and whined about the strength there, but rather enjoyed it. Uh, Here's one. Uh, the second one is very, very interesting. So a peach treat from Colorado. This one is from Indiana. It's from uh, the Huber Distillery in Starlight. And this is their Starlight Pear Brandy. Uh, and this was all distilled in 2004 to 2008, making it, when they bottled it, 10 to 14 years old. So 10-year-old pear brandy. Also bottled at 40%. What can you do? Um, <coughs> uh, Huber... Uh, more famous for their rise these days, but um, definitely their brandies are worth looking into. And last up, we have got a Copper and Kings pear brandy. Now this is from Off Premise, in Ch a, a Chicago retailer who um, are very interesting. They're not my favorite, and I don't really understand their business plan, but they're certainly interesting. Uh, now they forgot to put their little um, sticker uh, for their for their pick on this one. So, uh, no, it, the, the, the actual, there's no indication of proof or anything on here, so I had to look it up. Um, but this is 49% uh, alcohol. Uh, the story behind this, Copper and Kings in Kentucky got a hold of a fairly, fairly serious uh, stash of pear brandy from someone in Oregon, and it wasn't Clear Creek. Uh, I've actually talked to the Clear Creek folks. This was not them. Um so whoever it is, uh, we don't know. They made a lot of pear brandy, and they threw it in a variety of different casks. And then the Copper and Kings folks got a hold of it and um, gave it a finish. So this is so we'll we'll come to this shortly. Um, I did try a different version of this, and I thought it was okay. I thought the wood got a little bit weird, if I recall. Up, oh, my laptop is about to die on me because I didn't plug it in. Hold on. Recording this on a lazy weekend afternoon, so I'm not getting out of my jammies. Wife is out with baby for hopefully a few more minutes. I could finish recording this. Anyways, we have laptop power. Let us let us resume. Um, okay, let's get started with the Peach Street, Peach Street Pear Brandy XO. On the nose, I'm getting a lot of pear. As you might expect, um, it's doing. It's also throwing a lot of aromatic stuff. There's some perfumey elements, very subdued actually. But yeah, so we're getting sort of pear stew. Um, but you know, you you get a little bit of like an expensive French perfume and just do a little one little spray on top of it. Maybe it's even one of those little rub off samplers. It's not even. It's it's very subtle. What's also subtle on this is the oak. The oak is not sort of jumping out 
and punching me in the face, which is very nice. Pear is not a distillate you really want to over oak. It doesn't take to it as well as you might think. Um, there is a little bit of like um, of slight ashiness, but it's a it's an herbaceous ashiness. It's like a like a claro uh, uh, or a candela cigar ash. So you know the green cigars they used to they used to smoke in the gangster movies. Um, hair bit of uh, uh, cherry coming through now, a little um, little dried cherry along with the ash, but you have a secondary notes. The mat, the notes from oak maturation are quite subtle on this. Um, everything is a little bit turned down. I think that's because of the strength. Everything's a little bit smudged. But it's a nice nose. It's a very fruity nose, an accessible nose. Um, uh, this is not going to scare anyone away. Nice. Okay, let's give this a shot on the palate. Okay, my wife is on the way home, so I have to finish this quick. Um, actually, quite peppery. Uh, which is, I think, a combination of the cask. So there's some, some black pepper coming from the cask, but also some more exotic kind of pink peppercornness, which seems to be coming from the spirit. Mm. There is, the perfuminess is actually becoming a little bit almost soapy now, but in like a nice way. So nice soap, like really nice dish soap. Um, and that kind of carries through the, to the palate. So alongside the pepper, the different peppercorns, I'm getting, um, yeah, some, some stewed pears, bitter pears. There's a lot of bitterness on this, uh, which, I, which I like. Um, so, you know, slightly underripe pears, that kind of thing. The, the pear skins, the pear stems, the, the core, the seeds. Yeah, this is leaning to more towards whole pear, pear components, and unripe pear, more so than the, right, the, 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 you know, the stewed stuff I was getting on the nose. Um, some uh, tobacco elements to this. Some, oh man, I don't know. Um, the Claro stuff, the, the Candela cigars back. Um, so just some, some bright leaf Carolina pipe tobacco is in here. Um, uh, and that kind of soapy slash perfumey thing, which is not bad. I expect, you know, I, I don't mind that so much. It's not, it's not unbalancing it. It's just adding a different kind of flavor component. This is nice. I like this. Um, I, again, 40% on this is a crime. Um, and it's losing lots of points because of that. But, um, uh, you know, bump this up to, to, you know, 45% or so. And it's, it's instantly like in the mid to high, to high eighties, I would think. Um, but right now it's still doing okay. I'm, I would give this, I'm stuck between 83 and 84. So I'm going to give it an 83 plus. Um, good stuff. Let's move on. I'm actually curious what kind of oak they were using in that. It doesn't feel like, or at least I'm not getting huge American oak, uh, you know, punch on that, uh, peach street. So maybe it's French oak or some Caucasian oak. I don't some, some kind of interesting oak things going on. All right. We're at the starlight. And I'm, it's interesting I was talking about American oak because we have got a hell of a lot of American oak on this. It's kind of running the show here, actually. Um, yeah, so we're getting uh, so lots of vanilla, lots of um, uh, sawdust. Little hints of kirsch. Um, 
And then underneath that, you've got the floral notes and the, um, uh, well, it's really more the floral notes and the slight perfuminess uh, that, are sh that are throwing pear, more so than actual pear notes. They are there. There's some, it's like a, a, f a floral perfume, almost an Asian pear kind of, um, uh, Asian pear mixed with Bartlett kind of component there on the nose versus just obvious like stewed pear stuff I was getting on the on the peach street. Um, there is again some 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 pepper come through, coming through more white pepper this this time. Um, but again, the, the the strength is hobbling this uh, a bit. Um, it's kind of smudging the character, kind of making it hard to get distinct notes. Hmm. Something about this is reminding me of a white wine. I'm trying to remember what white wine I'm thinking of. Almost like a Viognier sort of note. Um, not French Viognier. This is more, you know, American Viognier, maybe Washington State Viognier. But yeah, it, it does have those those kinds of um, similar kind of kinds of aromatics to it. Nice. Um, it's a good nose. Let's see what happens on the palate. It's a very oaky nose, which you know, in this in this case, kind of works. Huh. That took a hard turn. What? Hmm. Okay. I was saying, speaking a little bit before about the um, how on uh, pear brandy, oak can kind of get a little awkward, a little weird, and it just got real weird for me um, on the end here. Let me try this again. The arrival's fine, then it kind of goes in a couple of directions. Yes, yeah, so what I was about to say is this arrives a very bourbon or maybe rye-like. Um, the arrival reminds me of, you know, stuff from Laird's. It's got that, that kind of lightness of touch I associate with aged um, fruit brandies, but it's also got a hell of a lot of oak on it. Um, American oak, so vanilla, uh, sawdust, a um, um, little dried cherry, that kind of thing. Um, uh, some, some, some ashiness. And then it just, on the, on the mid palate, uh, transitioning to the finish, it starts to get really awkward. Mm -hmm. Fine, fine, fine. Ooh. And then it kind of, so it feels like there's there's some sour pear and some perfumey pear goodness, almost fighting it out with the American oak. The American oak wants to be like, no, I, I am vanilla and cherry and ashy, you know, ch charcoal-y, campfire-y deliciousness with some marshmallows. And the pear brandy is, no, 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 no. I want to be sour and and perfumey and kind of weird and stemmy and a little bit green. And they are kind of fighting it out um, on the mid-palate uh, transition and on the finish. And um, it's, it's wrecking this a little bit. I don't know if one of those two elements on their own would be enough to kind of hold this up and making it, make it really interesting. I, I also think the strength is kind of messing with this. I bet this would be more coherent uh, or present a more coherent story if, again, it was at 43, 45% or something. Um, but at the end of the day, th th this is interesting, but it's not delicious. Like, I don't, it's a little bit of a challenge to drink this because it just gets really weird in a bad way like on the finish uh so how to score this arrival's fine not super interesting but fine um and it just kind of, kind of goes down from there i would give this uh, like an 81 like an 81 minus 
which is a very sad for me because I was actually really looking forward to this. Like, man, 10-year-old pear brandy from the U.S., from Indiana. That seems like it should be promising, but it just... It's not for me. This is not this is not my product. And moving on to the unlabeled uh, off-premise uh, pear brandy pick from Copper and Kings. Uh, Non-chill filtered, copper pot distilled, uh, no added anything. They, they keep it pretty pure. And again, according to the internet, this is 49% because they did not put my label on. Um, on the nose. Lots of pear. Um, again, it's whole pear, so you're getting the stems and the seeds and, and, the, and the skin. Unripe and also overripe pears, so sort of um, very sugary, but at the same time there's some green notes in there. And um, actually on the nose, it's we're in the same kind of territory as uh, the peach tree. It's just there's there's more there's more oomph there because they haven't knocked it down to 40 percent yeah a little cherry a little um a little kirsch the not uh, not as perfumey the perfume is more controlled but it is but there is some floral character here actually and some minerality too some just um um like rocks and maybe some like metal shavings too I get metal a lot on, on pear brandy, actually. And um, some pink, pink peppercorns on the nose, and we're done. At least so far. On the palate. Bitter, ashy, um, peri in a good way. Uh, oh, that's nice. I think I actually like this more than the Binnie's pick I reviewed way back when. Um, the finish is more coherent. So lots of unripe pear going on here again. Stems, skins, seeds, bitter things. Um, uh, but you are getting the fruit, the pear fruity goodness. The, the floral elements, the perfumey elements, not soapy this time, um, which is nice. And then, um, especially in the finish, the oak is just providing this little oomph of kind of gentle dried fruit, not, not even defined, just kind of, kind of black pepper smothered with kind of a mix of dried fruit, even maybe some dried pear in there. I lied. Now it's starting to get a little bit soapy. But again, I don't mind it because it's just one component among others rather than throwing the whole thing off balance. Um, I'm going to give this a squirt of water. Come back to it in a second. Actually, maybe two squirts, right? Because it's 49%. Squirt and a half. Yeah, this is getting in the mid-80s for me. I like this, actually. Um, put the top back on. It'll have to be a quick cleanup when my, when my wife gets here um, so that the toddler and the baby do not, you know, knock over everything. Um, but in general, so these, again, these are interesting because they are oak aged, which you would think, like, that's just what you would do um, with fruit brandies because we're in the U.S. and we love, some, you know, throwing things into oak. But maybe that's maybe that's not the right sort of move with the, with the distillate like, like pear, which throws so many sours and sort of crazy floral, almost soapy aromatics at you. Like this is, this is one where I would start looking at really alternative woods. Um, like sure, like, like uh, uh, you can look at, at Caucasian oak, um, right? Some, some of the softer oaks they use in, in winemaking or just get, get yourself out of oak. I mean, uh, plenty of other woods out there um, that are well worth trying. Or hell, get yourself a, a, a go, go to the nearest pottery studio. Have them make a, a big fevry for you. Bury your your pear brandy underground for a couple of years. See what happens. Because 
yeah, you really need a light light touch to make an. I feel like you need a light touch to make an aged, uh, oak aged pear brandy work well. Okay, no real development on the nose now that I'm coming back to this um, off premise copper and kings. But that, that's not the worst thing in the world. It smells pretty much the same. Um, but man, the, the, the bottling strength on this is, is absolutely helping it. It just, it's more vivid. The things are coming through a little bit better. On the palate. <coughs> yeah, this is good. Um, the pepper from the, uh, the oak, the wood maturation comes out a little bit more. So you're really getting like stewed pear, but like whole pear. And maybe you threw some unripe ones in there when you were stewing it up. Um, um, then you just like went to town with some, some black pepper on it. And that's really what I'm getting right now. Yeah, that little hint of sort of generalized dried fruit. But that's kind of that's kind of the game here. It's the black pepper and the stewed whole pear um, thing that is that is ruling the show here. But it works. I like this. I'm gonna give this a solid, straightforward 85 points out of 100. Um, it good. So yeah, let's uh, let's tally up and see what we got here. So I think the story is the, the thing is surprising to me here is is the um, the starlight. I was expecting this to kind of be at least in second place, if not in if, you know beating the the Copper and Kings. And man, it's this is a little bit of a disappointment to me. And I think it's just because you got to be careful with hair brandy. Got to be careful with how you how you mature it. Um, so what do we got? Uh, for the Peach Street Pear uh, Brandy XO, 83 plus. And 81 minus for the Star Starlight from Huber Pear Brandy. And the, the, the uh, off-premise Copper and Kings gets a very strong 85. Um, and that's it. I'm going to get set for my wife. Thanks for watching and cheers.